Now I have another variant of one of everybody's favorite trout nymphs. I think you're gonna like it. Hello everybody, welcome back. I'm Matt, thanks for stopping by. So I was flipping through Paul Weimer's The Bug Book recently. A great book, if you don't have this, definitely worth checking it out. It's not a tying book, it's more an entomology book, but it's got some great information in here on it. Now he does have a few flies in it. It is a, a book geared toward fly fishermen, and one of them in here is called a Beadhead CDC Flashback Pheasant Tail Nymph. Now I'd say a lot of us out there have tied the standard pheasant tail nymph, the Frank Sawyer's original, or the American pheasant tail version of it. And then a lot of us have tied it with a bead head, and then a lot of us put a flashback on it. But this one's got the bead and the flashback, and instead of pheasant tail fibers for the front legs, it's got some CDC. So who knows the history on this thing, who first created it? And it could have been created by any number of people over the years but it's a really cool pattern, not at all hard to tie, and it can be a really effective fish catcher. And I think y'all are gonna like it. Let's give it a shot. So there it is in the vise, a beadhead CDC pheasant tail. Now tie this on any size you typically tie your pheasant tails, 12, 14, 16s, even 18s. I'm gonna go on a size 12. This is a 2X long standard nymph hook, and that is a 2.4 millimeter tungsten bead. And I'm not gonna put any weight on it. This is gonna be heavy enough with this tungsten bead. So I'm gonna use some brown thread, 70 denier. And I'm gonna yeah, put a little dam right here. It might help that bead from sliding back. Probably won't, but give it a shot. Now take about six, seven strands of pheasant tail right here, just some of these fibers. And if they're sticking together, you can try and roll them between your fingers like this. It might help them break up. It might not do much good, but let's go ahead and tie a tail in. Oh, about a hook gap. Just do a couple of wraps right here. Now we can always try to spread those out if we need to a little bit later. But what I will do, I'll pull these up, take my thread just a little bit up. Got two more components I'm gonna catch in here in the back. First one is this small copper rib. So I'm gonna catch it in just right up here in the, kind of the middle of the, the fly. And then the next component is some either opal or mirage tinsel or pearl. This is a pearl in a size medium. And I will catch this right up here where I caught in this wire rib. Now I'm catching it on the side, but by the time I get it to the back, get up out of the way bead, when I get it to the back, I want the tinsel to be on top of the hook. And it is, it's getting there. Okay, so I think we're gonna be fine right there. Now I'll take my thread back up to about, I'd say maybe the two thirds point right there. That's a, where we're gonna stop wrapping our body and then we'll start the thorax right there. So I'll take my spring-loaded hackle pliers here, give these pheasant tail fibers just a little spin, not a whole lot of turns, but but a few to try to hold them together and then grab it with my hackle pliers and then just wrap them all the way up to where your thread is. And every couple of wraps, you might wanna give it another couple of twists. But go ahead and take it up. And the first few wraps, you're gonna be not laying down a whole lot of fibers, but by the time you get up toward the front, you'll be laying a little bit wider of a swath with each, each turn. Okay, when you've got enough of a body there, go ahead and catch this off with a couple of wraps right here. Now before I do anything with that rib or that flash, I'm gonna go ahead and tie in my thorax. So grab two or three strands of peacock curl. I'm gonna have to take about six because this is some pretty poopy peacock curl I got right here. I'm just trying to get through this bad pack I have, so I'm using it all up. And it's pretty thin stuff, so I'm gonna to have to take about six of these fibers just to get me a thick thorax here. Leave your thread, oh, a little bit behind the bead right there, maybe a little bit forward of where I have it. Now I'm gonna spin this, lick my fingers a little bit and just give this a little spin, not real tight. Don't want a big rope, but just enough to keep them from spreading out on me. And I'm gonna put five or six wraps here 
to give me the profile I want, which is a thin body and a little bit thicker of a thorax, just like lots of mayfly nymphs have. So I wasn't counting. I think that's probably four or five wraps. Let's go ahead and catch this off right behind the bead. Now here is something I do, and I don't know that everybody does this, and I don't think it matters too much, but I'm gonna lay this over my, my flash tinsel and just put a, two temporary wraps right on top. And then I'll make sure I've got it where I want it. Okay, so those are two wraps right there. I'm gonna make sure it's on the top. You see that? At the right angle, this holographic pearl flash can really put out some reflection. So I've got it where I want. Now I'm going to wrap my rib, but not all the way up to the front, just over the pheasant tail fibers. So probably three wraps. Then when I get to the back of this peacock curl, I'm gonna do two wraps right on top of each other. Now I'm going to release these wraps, pull this back, and then finish this up through my peacock curl. So it just helps lock that peacock curl in, but this wire rib won't mat down my, the flashback up front. So I'll show you what I'm talking about in a second. Go ahead and spin this off. Now we fold this back up here and we can finish catching in this flash. Okay, so you see I've got the wire rib holding it on the back half, but not holding it on the front half. And that's exactly what I want. I'll fold this back and put a few extra wraps right here just to really lock this flash in. We can snip that off. Now we've only got one more component to put on it. That's just this big, fluffy CDC, kind of greasy, kind of oily feather right here. I'm gonna pull it back, create a little tie-in point, and grab a small one if you can, but if you don't have a small one, don't worry about it, because we are going to uh, take care of that in the, the last step. So I've caught that in with two or three wraps, and I'm gonna put a couple more just to lock it. Now I'm gonna snip off this front piece right here. Now I'm gonna take two wraps of this CDC, just like it was a hackle. And it's gonna have some really long fibers, but don't be alarmed. I'll show you how we take care of those in a second. So there's two right, one wrap right there. Let's get the second one in here. Okay, that should be fine. Now let's just catch this in right behind the bead. And we'll go ahead and snip the stem off right here. Okay, let's pull these back and then fill in this gap behind our bead and the hackle. So don't be afraid to put a few wraps right here, just like you would a, a regular bead head pheasant tail or even a prince nymph. Put a few nice solid wraps right there. We're kind of filling that gap in. Now we're gonna whip finish right there behind the bead. And obviously these are too long. So what I'll do in a case like this, I'll just bunch them all together, grab them with my fingers about how long I want them, and then just break them off. You can just kind of pinch and pull and you'll break them off. You could cut them, I'm sure, but some people say you should never cut the tips of feathers off. So breaking them might be just a little bit, um, keep it a little bit more natural in the water. So there we go, a um, little bit of cleanup. I've got a couple of them curled up on me right there. Uh, critiquing this fly, I could have probably put one more wrap of CDC just to give me a few more fibers, but you know, in the end, sparse is sometimes better. So there you go, a CDC beadhead flashback pheasant tail nymph. So I appreciate you watching everybody. Y'all take care and we'll see you next time.